Solomon is here and you're looking to clear the raid and get your bear. To do this you have to beat the first four bosses on a set timer. This is actually pretty easy to do as long as you don't wipe to the mechanics. You want to bring two tanks, two or three healers depending on how safe you want to play and then the rest DPS. You will most likely make the timer by playing it safe so a third healer is probably not a bad call the first time around. To start off you talk to Harrison Ford. Five people will need to click the gong and stand still until Harrison starts moving. This will save you to the raid and start the mount timer once the gates open. Clear the initial mobs then head left up to the first boss. Going here starts a gauntlet. Birds will spawn up top and fly down to you, and trolls will come from down below. So don't have any healers or casters in the back be caught off guard. Interrupt the windwalkers and pull at the pace you're comfortable with. The gauntlet isn't too deadly. Last trash mob is the Tempest. This guy knocks back in melee range and is taunt immune, so be careful with threat. He also ends the gauntlet when you kill him. Then you're gonna reach the first boss which has a few mechanics. A chain lightning forcing you to spread, a knock up sending you far into the air, bursts that deal a small amount of damage to raid members and a cloud you need to stand under to avoid damage. To deal with this fight, have your ranged and caster spread around in a circle around the boss. Be as close to each other as possible without spreading the lightning, which is 10 yards. This will make it easier for everybody to make it to the cloud in time. Make sure people knocked up into the air are full health before they hit the ground. When the storm comes, move underneath the cloud and keep attacking the boss. The range of the cloud is deceptively large, so if you spread correctly the melee should still be able to hit the boss during it. Make sure nobody dies and the boss will die. Next you head south towards the second boss. This guy also has a gauntlet that starts when you get close. There's a set amount of mobs here though, so you don't need to rush it. Tribesmen have a melee knockback, so stay at range if you're a caster. Axe throwers throw axes at random people and can also stun the tank briefly. You can skip the bears up ahead, but if you don't, make sure to stun them and nuke them down. They hit quite hard and also reduce the tank's armor drastically. Keep moving up and kill the caster first. Then you're going to reach the bear rider packs. These do a frontal cleave and debuff close targets to take increased damage. They also dismount at around 25%, which means you also have to fight the bears. The safest way to deal with these is just to split them up and face them away from everybody to avoid the damage taking debuff stacking. But we had a lot of cleaves so we stacked them up but faced them in different directions to avoid both tanks getting cleaved. Kill them off individually and if you want to be safe, kill the bear before going on to the second one. The bear has an enrage which can be trank shot. Next pack is the same but with two additional mobs. Probably the scariest pack in the raid. Stun the small guys and kill one of the big guys first to avoid the enrage. Then kill the rest. When all enemies are dead, not including the dismounted bears, the boss becomes active. This boss is a tank fight. He will start out in troll form where he will do a cleave that splits damage to both tanks. You can solo this cleave if you're strong, but if you want to play it safe just have both tanks in front. He applies Mangle to the main target, increasing damage taken by bleeds by 100%. This doesn't matter until he goes bear form though. When he swaps, have the off tank taunt and all healers immediately switch. In bear form he has two different bleeds, one that lasts a long time and hits for a moderate amount and one that has a short duration and hits very hard. If both of these are applied at the same time, the tank will take a lot of damage and if you fall behind on healing here it can be deadly, especially since he silences the raid frequently in this phase. After the bear phase is over, just taunt back and the fight restarts. He also charges random players and knocks people back at his destination. When doing this he can cleave on his way back to the tank, so be careful. Next you will head east towards the third boss. There are two enemies to be careful of here. First is the flame casters. They have a 180 frontal cone which can be interrupted, but just turn them away for safety. They also cast haste on themselves, which increases their spell haste by 300% and movement speed by 200%. You can purge this or, if you have a mage, let them spell still it and become gods for a bit. Second mob is the scout. Scouts only have 7k HP and die very quickly, but if you fail to kill them, they will run to the closest drum and spawn additional mobs. So just charge in and kill them quickly. Use stuns and slows when necessary. Third boss has multiple ways to be dealt with depending on your resources. He has a fire breath that he uses on a random player. This forces your raid to be spread as well as melee to be split up into two groups behind the boss. He will also occasionally teleport to the middle and spawn fire bombs which explode for a large amount of damage. These have a small hitbox and take very long time to explode so they should be easy to avoid. At 35% the boss will hatch all the dragon hawk eggs on either side of him most likely wiping a raid, but there is a mechanic to help you with this. Two hatchers will spawn throughout the fight and start hatching the eggs slowly, ramping up over time. This is where you have to decide how you want to deal with it. We killed one hatcher, let the other one through and kill the dragon hogs as they came, placing the boss by the bridge for easier cleave. 
At 35% when the other side hatches, we all just use Sapper in unison killing them instantly. But this might not be viable for everybody, so alternatively you can let both hatches through, place a tank on either side and kill them as they come. But the easiest the first time around is most likely waiting to push the boss below 35% and kill one hatcher and let one hatcher clear an entire side because when he does, he will move over to the other side and start hatching those. Best is just to play it safe the first time around, don't push the boss to 35% if you're not ready. So, to recap, spread out for breath, dodge the bombs when boss teleports to the middle, decide what you want to do with the hatchers, kill dragon hawks and be ready for 35%. He also enrages at 20%, so be sure to put debuffs up and keep the tank alive. Don't parry haste the tank to death. Next, you will run north towards the fourth boss. Hug the right side here as you clear trash to skip most of it, and avoid pulling trolls at the hut. Either kill or skip the crocodile patrol, then you're gonna enter the area with the stealth cats. There are three packs of cats in total located here, and they will emerge when you come close. Along this path there will also be two patrols. These patrols have beast tamers, which mind control. Be careful not to pull too much and be ready to purge when your allies get mind controlled. When you walk up the stairs, fight this pack in the middle to avoid pulling the sides. When entering the boss room, fight any packs back in the hallway as the boss has a large aggro radius. There is also a patrol in the room you need to watch out for. This boss is like a more deadly version of the second boss. Both your tanks need to stand in front and have your tankiest tank on the actual boss and the other tank there to soak the cleave. Tanks can get heavily chunked here, so be ready. At every 25% interval, he will deal a massive amount of AoE damage to your raid and then summon a Link Spirit. In this phase, the boss will no longer do his cleave, so have your second tank run and pick up the links before it kills anybody. And healers top the raid. He also spawns a totem here that casts Chain Lightning. It doesn't hit for much, but kill it quickly anyway, since it has low health. He will also cast Flame Shock, be ready to dispel that fast, as well as Earth Shock, which locks you out from casting for 4 seconds. Healers make sure nobody's too low to avoid dying from this. To end this phase, get either the links or the boss low. Any excess damage here doesn't matter, so we just pick the boss and burst it down, then repeat. Once this boss is dead, talk to the gnome in the cage and get your Amani Warbear. It's worth noting that these cages exist on every boss you clear with the timer running and provides extra loot, but these guys will stay until after the raid, so you can clear it first, then free them to gain a bit of time. There's no longer a timer here, so you can breathe out for a second before moving on to the fifth boss. This boss has a crazy amount of mechanics because it's based on the classes in your raid, so I'll try to be brief. He starts off with 4 adds, you can CC them as you see fit until the end of the fight or kill them, it's up to you. Some adds of note are the ghost which fears, the blood of which heals that you can interrupt, the ogre casts bloodlust so purge the boss, the undead guy gives you some weird damage reflect things so watch out for your debuffs and don't kill yourself with it. The dragon has a frontal cone and a thunderclap, probably the most dangerous mob in here. Even if you don't want to kill all, try to CC stuff initially so you're not overwhelmed on pull. The boss won't do much when you first engage him as you're supposed to deal with the adds here. But a while into the fight he will start casting spirit bolts. This is a long channel that deals damage to your entire raid. Make sure to heal this and if it's looking rough, DPS can help off heal and use health stones as well. After the spirit bolts he will cast something called soul siphon on a player, which will give him abilities based on what class he used it on. The details are on screen and in the description if you're looking for all, but I will go through what I think is most important. If he does it on a paladin, he will use consecration and avenging wrath at the same time. This is super deadly, so move out of it very quickly and purge the boss. He will do this twice. Warrior gives him whirlwind which deals a massive amount of damage if you stay in. It takes once halfway through the cast and once at the end. Hunters gives him all sorts of traps, just move out of explosive trap. On Warlocks, do not dispel Unstable Affliction, as this will most likely kill you. In general, he will do two sets of abilities before the Siphon Soul ends and he will cast Spirit Bolts again. This means you need to be really careful towards the end as to not take damage, because too much raid-wide damage going into Spirit Bolts can easily mean a few deaths or even a wipe. Lastly, there's the final boss, Sol Jin. He is pretty easy if you just respect his mechanics. He will block off the entrance to his room as soon as he's engaged, so make sure everybody's inside first. Phase 1 has two abilities. One is Whirlwind, which you just move out of, and the other is Grievous Throw. It will place a dot on you that lasts until you're full health, so healers just keep track of this. At 80% he will run to the middle and transition into Phase 2, the bear phase. At every transition, as soon as he transforms, he will drop threat completely, and he is not tauntable, so you need to respect the aggro here and let the tank pick it up. As a bear, he does one thing of note, paralysis. You can dispel the initial debuff on this, so dispel key targets like tanks and healers first. Then when the debuff runs out, anybody who still has it gets stunned for a few seconds. At 60% he will transition into the bird phase. There is no threat here, so just keep pumping. He will sit still in the middle while storms fly around the room. 
try to dodge them to the best of your ability. Any spells cast during this time will cause you to take a small amount of damage, so be wary of your health in this phase. Once you're at 40%, he will transform into a Lynx, once again resetting aggro. His most deadly ability in this phase is Claw Rage. He will target a random player, charge them and deal a massive amount of damage, ramping up over time. The easiest way to deal with this is just to use Blessing of Protection on the target, then it will go back to the tank instantly. If you don't have this, just get ready to heal a lot, depending on your output your DPS might need to off heal. Try to equip a shield if you get targeted and use anything that might help you live, such as a feign death, an ice block, anything like this will reset his target. The second ability, he will charge around to every player in the room, dealing a small amount of damage. Push the boss to 20% and he will reach the final Dragonhawk form. Once again, respect aggro and then burn down the boss. He will cast Pillars of Flame at the player's location, so just move out of that. Make sure to not be in front of the boss and the healers stay on top of healing so nobody dies to Flame Whirl. And that's it. Sol'jin should have died with relative ease and you will have cleared Suleiman.